Let's take a look at some new analytical capabilities in 714. From my dashboard, I'm gonna create a visualization of some time data. And for that, I'm gonna use a line chart. The first function I wanna show you has to do with shifting data in time. So I'm gonna duplicate my count of records. So I have the same line on here twice. I'm gonna edit my second one. And this feature shows up as an advanced option called time shift. And when I click a time shift, you can see I can enter any custom shift. So an interval in time, or I can use one of these presets like one week. The result is I get the same metric trended backwards by one week compared to the metric now. And this helps me draw comparisons between now and see if it's normal when compared to a week ago. This is one advanced function that we've added in 714, but we're taking it further. So say I don't wanna use two lines to do this visualization. I'm gonna edit this count of week records from a week ago, and I'm gonna use our new custom formula to turn it into a formula representation of that time shift. The reason this is really powerful is I can combine any math or metric together with some basic math. So I'm gonna take a count of now without a shift and subtract by the count from a week ago to get a line that shows me peaks when I had more data from a week ago and valleys when I had less data from a week ago over the zero line here in the middle. This is really powerful because I can combine any of the quick functions and elastic search aggregations together with math. So we've included this function reference and the function reference has all of the details about how this works. A popular way you might wanna use this is to construct a filter ratio. This is where you use KQL inside of something like account to filter only the counts for records with status codes over 400 as a ratio on top of the count of overall records using a dividing side in the middle. Notice you can use math signs interchangeably to combine multiple metrics on multiple fields. And there's three common examples here, percent of total, week over week, and filter ratio. Here you can see the syntax for all of the different quick functions, elastic search aggregation options that are available, unique count, average count, last value, things like that. And we have column-wise calculations in Lens that help you do counter rates, cumulative sum, differences, moving averages. But for the first time we've added in custom formula, these overall totals. These are really useful to generate things like percent to totals, which I'll show you in just a moment. Finally, to add it all off, we have math to help you put all of these different pieces together. And you can notice I don't have to always use these uh, spelled out function names. I can also use the symbol representation as well. So let's do something a little bit more interesting. And for that, I'm gonna show this expand mode. And I'm gonna use the average of a field in my data for bytes. And what I wanna do is show, actually, let's do a sum of bytes. I'm gonna do it. I wanna show how to construct a percent to total for the overall graph. So if I wanna see for a given period of time, what the percentage that period of time was for the overall graph, I could do something like a sum of bytes divided by an overall sum of the sum of bytes. And this gives me a percent representation for the last two days. So this value here is 6.2% of the overall graph. If I wanted to change this, I can make this also look like a percent and we can give it a nice name, percent of overall bytes. You can see it's very easy to configure both time shifts and custom formula together or independently to build exactly the metric that you wanna build. The next thing I wanna show you is how you can visualize this information in a new way. Over here in the table, we've always had the ability to show multiple metrics, and now we have the ability to pivot data into columns, but we've added this new function that lets you take data and color it by value. In this example, you might wanna do that to highlight a high value, but you can also customize the color range in a variety of different ways. So say, for example, I wanted to only color values that are over 80% of my data by a certain color to make them kind of stand out. It's very easy to customize your color stops. You can also use a bunch of preset palettes. So if I wanted to look at the whole range, if I wanted to reverse my colors, and I can set these color stops by either percent, which is a percent representation of the overall data, or a number, an absolute value that represents the actual data coming back from that metric. It's very easy to define this. Um, so we're hoping we'll see some really exciting tables. Uh, we've also added this ability to do things like a summary row, which you can use to sum up data. <laughs> and uh, that's not that useful. Maybe an average would be more useful here. 
And I get this bottom value that shows me the average for the overall the last two days for all the different values that are on my table. And this can be useful to show you, you know, the, the summary of the data. What's nice about this is you can remove the label if you don't need it, or you can add your own if you want it to say something else, and you can have a nice clean look here at the bottom. So I've showed you four different things, time shifts, custom formula, color by value, and summary row. But we haven't just stopped there. We also have new ways to explore time, not just in this visualization editor, but also in maps. So let's head on over and look at our geo coordinates field in maps. If I zoom into my data, and on the left-hand side, you see we've added this new control called Time Slider. Time Slider brings up this panel at the bottom that lets me move through my data in time, just like you would a movie, and customize the interval that you want to look at just by grabbing these little points here on the end. And once I do that, I can you know, manually step through time. Or what I really like to do is find the interval that's interesting to me. So maybe I want to look at a whole day at a time and hit play and I can step through the data and see how the data transpired to get to that point. These are some of the highlights of the new analytical capabilities coming in Kibana and 714. We're really excited to share them with you. And for more information, head on over to our blog.